Oh, I'm so excited. Tomorrow is Watercolor Wednesday. And the first rule of Watercolor Wednesday is ask a grown up. Make sure you're double checking with people in your family who are in charge. Make sure you have a nice space to work and make sure that any iffy materials you're using, they are approving. I'm going to do the video demonstration with you today, but I do suggest you re-watch this tomorrow while you're working or just before you're working to give you some reminders and tips. So the first thing you're going to need is watercolor paper. And the watercolor paper is very small. It's in a baggie in your art kit and it's much thicker. It's a really good expensive paper that can handle the water. Yeah, you're in middle school. I'm giving you good expensive materials now. If you don't have it or can't find it, really dump out your art kit and please look because I think you'll love it. But if you still can't find it, try to find a thick paper as a substitution. And maybe it's uh, like a card stock or index card that usually works a little bit better, but get creative, be a creative problem solver. You're also going to need your watercolors, yay! And I get a container with some water in it. Um, you might not want to use like your best china for this, um, nothing super fancy. Um, you might even want to go into a recycling bin and reuse a container that is on its way to being recycled, but just get a little container half filled with water. I can't like really show you on the side, but I didn't fill this all the way up to the top. Don't do that. Just a little half full with water. And I also optional, but I do get a paper towel or napkin. I know these are a hot commodity these days. Um, so you don't have to use it, but I do like to dry off my brush. Check this out. Where's your brush? It should be inside of your watercolors. Oh my gosh, and this side is a great place to mix. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love painting. And I actually gave you these watercolors because I think the brush is actually decent. Some brushes that come with watercolor kits are really cruddy, but these ones, they're decent, they're decent. The first thing you need to do before you even start to think about painting is you need to wet your watercolors. What? Yes, you wet your watercolors. So you pick up your brush, ooh, I'm so excited, and you use your brush to do this. You dip your brush in the water and you put some water into each little cup. I start with yellow. Yellow is a very weak color, but don't tell yellow that. And I go from my weaker colors to my stronger colors. I'll do black last. And take good care of your art kit. When you're done with this, if I forget to tell you, don't pick this up and walk around with it. Um, it will drip. I usually just leave my watercolors just like this to dry overnight so they don't drip all over my house. If you do drip all over your house, be a responsible adult and clean up after yourself. Okay, so that's step one, wet your watercolors. I'm gonna move them over to the side and my paint and brush is there. And here's the thing, I'm holding my cup or honestly, I think the best thing to do, especially if you have a plastic cup that might tip over, is take your brush out and lay your brush down flat when you're not using it. Um, sometimes cups tend to tip over and make everything a mess, so make sure you're not working where your computer space is. Then we are going to do some fun explorations with our watercolor. I wrote on my paper, you don't have to, but um, you can if you want. So the first thing I want you to try is just playing with wet watercolor on dry paper. So this paper's dry, and this is the way most of us work. Just put some wet watercolor on dry paper. And if you're using the watercolor paper, you're gonna love it. See what happens if the paint touches each other and mixes and blends together. I'm just gonna use some primaries. So that's wet paint on dry paper. And I'm just playing. I'm not trying to make anything. I'm just playing around, exploring, having fun with art. Now the next thing that I wanna do is wet paint on wet paper. So I'm gonna rinse my brush off. You can always go and get some more fresh water if you want. Mine's starting to turn colors already, so you can go get fresh water. And you're gonna wet the paper first. If you're not using watercolor paper, your paper might not like this too much. So when it's dry the following day, you'll just go back and you might wanna put it under a textbook when it's dry, because it might look like a Pringle. All right, now I'm gonna see how it changes by putting wet paint on wet paper. So, oh, and so see how it's, a lot softer, fuzzier. So again, I'm just playing around. You could do line shapes, but just experiment and explore. Artists do this all the time. We're always trying things out to see what will happen. So this is wet paint on wet paper. Okay. 
Now the next thing I'm going to explore, and I'm going fast, but you guys take your time, is watercolor paints over other materials. So you can break out your crayons if you want, try your crayons. And again, this is just an experiment. I'm wondering what will happen. Maybe you can try some colored pencils. Maybe you can try some glue. Hey, why not? You know, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try some glue. And you're really just going to explore what will happen when you put materials over each other. So there's some glue there. I might have to wash my brush really good after that one. So what happens when you put watercolors over other materials? And you can use any materials that you have at home. So let's see what happens. I'll get a little black. Okay. Oh, interesting texture. Oh, the glue kind of moved around. Can't quite see my color pencil a little bit. And then the other thing you could do, I can see the glue a little bit, that's kind of cool. The other thing you can do is now play around. I use my watercolor, I'm sorry, I use my paper towel. Sometimes I rip a little piece off, sometimes I blot. And I'm just playing and having fun. And you could go back to these later. Now, artist choice. This one I want you to just really have fun with. You can put different materials on it. Um, yes, I will show you salt, oh glue, I already did. Um, rubbing alcohol, you could scratch with a pin. If you use rubbing alcohol, make sure you check with your grown-up salt. Um, they'll just think you're crazy, but it's really cool. So let's see what happens. Okay, my choice in the last one. So let me get some colors. Put my watercolor colors on there. Play around, let's see what happens. Okay, and now I'm just gonna put some crazy things on top. Oh, I forgot to tell you one of my favorite things. I'm putting salt on there. Yes, I'm using my grinder right on there. The salt I leave on there. But one of my favorite, favorite things is actually taking some plastic, which is hard to find now because Touch County has been really great. And we've been getting rid of our plastic bags, which is great. But if you have any lying around, I actually cut up the plastic. I know that's hard to see, but I just cut the plastic that came with my art kit, which is totally fine. And I lay it on top of some of the big puddles. So I'm gonna do that again on the other side. I'm gonna lay it on top of a big puddle. So I try to save like all packaging because I use it in my artworks. So I'm making a big puddle down here and I'm gonna lay my plastic on it. So that's another fun thing to do. I'm leaving the salt and I'm leaving the plastic overnight. And then if you wanna try the rubbing alcohol, make sure you check with a grown up. I'm just pouring a little bit into the cap. You can drip it with your paintbrush if you want. I think I'll try doing that. Um, or you can use like Q-tips if you'd like. But with the rubbing alcohol, you just drip it on top of the watercolor paint. And again, you won't see anything for a while. So you just drip it. But eventually, as it sits overnight, it will change your artwork. You can also drip it with your brush. Get some with your brush and drip it. At school, I have pipettes that I use, but I don't have them here. Yeah, science and art together. So play around with your watercolors. That will be your assignment is to just explore and experiment. And once you start to find something you like, some techniques that you like, I want you to play around some more and see if you can apply them to your leaf drawing that you did. So this time, instead of coloring our leaf drawing, we are going to be painting it. So see what kind of cool things you can do. Maybe you liked wet on wet. Maybe you liked the dry. Maybe you're going to do a little bit of both and you don't have to stay in the lines this time. So play around and see what cool techniques you can use for your second drawing. Ooh, not even drawing, a watercolor painting. Your second leaf art in your series. Cool, awesome. So I'm just gonna keep playing and hopefully this starts to inspire you guys and you get some fun ideas for Watercolor Wednesday. Have fun, I can't wait to see your two watercolor paintings that you are working on on Thursday when I see you again in class. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, this is so fun. Happy painting.